The Tower of London, known as the home site of history, the London backdrop, and where there are too many horrendous mysteries to count. Hi, my name is Rebecca, and I work as a ghost tour guide in one of the most haunted cities in the southern United States. However, you'll notice my go-to backdrop has changed for this episode. I've come to London for the first time to tour, explore, and give myself some much needed time with one of my best friends. You'll notice this was filmed before the restrictions of the COVID-19 outbreak. That said, I wanted to be sure to keep my weekly updates coming, and I'm so excited to show you some of the mysteries of the Tower of London. Built by William the Conqueror in 1078, this medieval castle was used as both a royal residence and was even being used as a prison up until 1952. While the complex has grown and changed over nearly the 1,000 years of use, now it is one of London's most sought after tourist spots. While visitors are not allowed here after dark, that is not to say that the ghosts of the past are hiding away during the day. This marker inside an easily missed doorway speaks of a mystery that remains unsolved even 600 years later. In April of 1483, King Edward IV dies, leaving his two sons, Edward, who is 12, and his younger brother, who is 9. The brother of the dead king, Richard, has the boys brought to the tower to prepare for Richard V's coronation. However, in June of the same year, the boys are declared illegitimate by Richard. Following this, the last time the boys are seen is in the tower garden, playing. In no time, and with Richard's own coronation, rumors began to spread that the princes had been murdered. 200 years later, in 1674, two small skeletons were discovered. King Charles II believes they are the two lost princes and buries them in Westminster Abbey with the royal line. In 1933, the bones were investigated further, and it was concluded that they were, in fact, the two young princes. However, it remained a mystery as to whether or not the boys were truly murdered. Either murdered or only hidden, it would be no surprise to hear a child's laugh around the garden, or even hear where they spent their last days. If the ghosts of the young princes were indeed running around where the remains were hidden, they likely would have been witnessed by a man in prison here who was a huge connection to my home state of North Carolina. Sir Walter Raleigh is known for establishing what would become known as the Lost Colony at Roanoke and the namesake of our capital city, Raleigh. Kept from the world, Raleigh was imprisoned in this room between 1603 and 1616 by Queen Elizabeth due to allegations of treason made against him. It was Elizabeth's successor, King James I, who spared his life and allowed him imprisonment here. During that time, he wrote books and poetry, gardened, and was allowed regular visitations. While he was pardoned in 1617, he was beheaded a year later after sailors under his employment attacked a Spanish vessel. The separation of his head from his body has done little to sever his spirit from Earth. Reports of his apparition are not secluded to the Tower of London. However, here, he seems to have an element of gore to his appearances. Some centuries have fainted at the sight of him holding his still bleeding severed head. Others, however, have seen him going about the area just as he would in life, walking the land, tending the garden, and riding. Whether intentional or not, this prison seems to have become a chosen spot for the old adventurous soul of Sir Walter Raleigh. King Henry VI, who lived from 1421 to 1471, lived a life consumed with an inherited war, heavily influential advisors, and incredible loss. Despite this, he was understood as passive, timid, and shy until his death. Being born into a position he was not suited for, he lost battles and treaties with France, suffered numerous mental breakdowns, and watched as his country fell into civil war. He was eventually imprisoned by his successor, Edward IV. 
His mental health continued to fail until he died. The mystery remains whether this was of natural causes of heartbreak or from murder. This was merely a rumor until his body was excavated in 1484 and found to have blood in his hair that attributed to great damage done to his skull. While I personally believe his spirit has departed from our place on Earth, his story has been told and kept alive through the works of William Shakespeare, Sir Thomas More, who I'll cover later, through the many acts of offering education to the people through schools, and the Festival of Lilies and Roses. He was not suited for the wars left to him. However, what he did leave behind, for the sake of good, would last far longer than any war. While a number of people were imprisoned upstairs, and a small percentage of them were tortured downstairs in the cellars, I'm going to share with you one who I have personal connections with. On my mother's side, I am a Moor, and from that line, I am a direct descendant of this man, Sir Thomas More, former Lord Chancellor to King Henry VIII. More did not agree with the King's split from the Catholic Church, and refused to acknowledge him as the head of the new Church of England considering the king was doing this just so that he could legalize his own divorce. The quote, torture Moore received was being denied books, writing materials, and visitors. He had little to do all day outside of staring through the windows. Against the wishes of those closest to him, he kept to his truth and was beheaded for it just outside his prison in 1535. His last words being, died the king's good servant, but God's first. He's now recognized as a saint in both the Catholic Church and the Church of England. With the family name devastated, his descendants would later make their way to the Jamestown colony via Virginia, and eventually down to North Carolina, where most of us still reside. I don't believe his ghost is still here, but I do believe in understanding his dedication to his beliefs, and I came here to pay my own respects, and to walk the old halls and look out the same window that my great-great-great times I think 16 grandfather used to look out of. Thank you so much for watching this special Tower of London episode of Rebecca the Ghost Guide. This was filmed on February 7th, 2020, which was not only Sir Thomas More's birthday, but also mine. If you enjoyed watching this or have stories of your own or thoughts to share, please leave them in the comments below. As always, a big thank you to my subscribers here on TikTok and on Instagram. All links can be found below. Lastly, if you would like to give to my filmmaking fund, you would be my hero. As many of you know, I am currently out of all of my jobs due to the coronavirus, so any spare change that you can give to me so that I continue to make these videos for you, I would be so, 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 so grateful. Till next week, I'm Rebecca, The Ghost Guide.